Hello, everyone, to the data quality panel. Data quality matters because more and more people out there rely on our data being in good shape. So we're going to talk about data quality. And the, there will be four speakers who will give short introductions uh, on topics related to data quality, and then we will have a Q&A. And the first one is Lucas. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lucas, and I'm going to start with an overview of data quality tools that we uh, already have on Wikidata and also some things that are coming up soon. And uh, I've grouped them into some general themes of making errors more visible, making problems actionable, getting more eyes on the data so that people notice the problems, uh, fix some common sources of errors, uh, maintain the quality of the existing data, and also human curation. And the ones that are currently available start with um, property constraints. So you've probably seen this if you're on Wikidata. You can sometimes get these icons, which uh, check the internal consistency of the data. For example, if one event follows the other, then the other event should also be followed by this one, which on the Wikidata con item was apparently missing. I'm not sure this screenshot is a few days old. And there's also, if this is... Uh, to limit it or simple for you, you can write any checks you want using the query service, which is useful for lots of things, of course, but you can also use it for um, finding errors. Like If you've noticed one occurrence of a mistake, then you can check if there are other places where people have made a very similar error and find that with the query service. You can also combine the two and search for constraint violations in the query service, for example, only the violations in some area or wiki project that's relevant to you, although the results are cu currently not complete, sadly. There's revision scoring. Uh, that's I think this is from the recent changes. You can also get it on your watch list, an automatic assessment of is this edit likely to be in good faith or in bad faith, and is it likely to be damaging or not damaging? I think those are the two dimensions. So you can, if you want, focus on just looking through the damaging but good faith edits. If you're feeling particularly friendly and welcoming, you can tell these editors, um, thank you for your contribution. Here's how you should have done it, but um, thank you still. And if you're not feeling that way, you can go through the bad faith damaging edits and revert the vandals. There's also similar to that entity scoring. So instead of scoring an edit, uh, the change that it made, you score the whole revision and I think this is the same quality measure that Lydia mentioned in uh, the beginning of the conference. Uh, that gives it's a user script up here and gives you a score of like one to five, I think it was, of what the quality of the current item is. The primary sources tool is for any database that you want to import, but that's not high enough quality to directly add to Wikidata, so you add it to the primary sources tool instead, and then humans can decide should they add these individual statements or not. Uh, showing coordinates as maps is mainly a convenience feature, but it's also useful for quality control. Like if you see, this is supposed to be the office of Wikimedia Germany, and if the coordinates are somewhere in the Indian Ocean, then you know that something is not right there, and you can see that much more easily than if you just had the numbers. This is a gadget called the Relative Completeness Indicator, which uh, shows you this little icon here. Uh, telling you how complete it thinks this item is and also which properties are most likely missing, which is really useful if you're editing an item in, your, in an area that you're not very familiar with and you don't know what the right properties to use are, then this is a very useful gadget to have. And we have shape expressions. I think um, Andra or Jose are going to talk more about those, but basically a very powerful way of comparing the data you have against the schema, like what statements should certain entities have, what other entities should they link to, and what should those look like, and then you can find problems that way. I think, no, there's still more. Integrality, or probably dashboard, gives you a quick overview of the data you already have. For example, this is from the wiki project Red Pandas, and you can see that we have a sex or gender for almost all of the red pandas. The date of birth varies a lot by which zoo they come from, and we have almost no dead pandas, which is wonderful, <laughs> because they're so cute. Uh, so this is also useful. There we go. Okay, now for the things that are coming up. 
uh, Wikidata Bridge, or also known formerly known as client editing, so editing Wikidata from Wikipedia info boxes, which will, uh, on the one hand, get more eyes on the data because more people can see the data there, and it will hopefully uh, encourage more use of Wikidata in the Wikipedias, and that means that more people can notice if, for example, some data is outdated and needs to be updated instead of if they would only see it on Wikidata itself. Um, there's also tainted references. The idea here is that if you edit a statement value, you might want to update the references as well, unless it was just a type or something. And this uh, tainted references tells editors that and also lets other editors uh, see which other edits were made that edited a statement value and didn't update a reference, and then you can clean up after that and decide uh, should that be, uh, do you need to do anything more of that, or is that actually fine and you don't need to update the reference? That's related to signed statements, which is uh, coming from a concern, I think, that some data providers have, that like um, there's a statement that's referenced to the UNESCO or something, and then some, um, someone vandalizes the statement, and they're worried that it will look like uh, this organization, like UNESCO, still said this uh, vandalism value, and so with signed statements, they can uh, cryptographically sign this reference, and that doesn't prevent any edits to it, but at least if someone vandalizes the statement or edits it in any way, then the signature is no longer valid, and you can tell this is not exactly what the organization said, and perhaps it's a good edit, and they should re-sign the new statement, but also perhaps it should be um, reverted. And also, this is going to be very exciting, I think, Cytoid is this amazing system they have on Wikipedia, where you can paste a URL or an identifier or an ISBN or a Wikidata ID or basically anything into Visual Editor, and it spits out a reference that is nicely formatted and has all the data you want, and it's wonderful to use, and by comparison on Wikidata, if I want to add a reference, I typically have to add the reference URL, title, author name string, published in, publication date, retrieved date, at least those, and that's uh, annoying, and integrating Cytoid into Wikibase will hopefully help with that. And I think that's all the ones I had. Yeah, so now I'm going to pass to Christina. Hi. Uh, I'm Christina, I'm a research scientist from the University of Zurich and I'm also an active member of the uh, Swiss community. Um, when Claudia Mullabrin and I submitted this uh, to the Wikidatacon, what we wanted to do is uh, continue a discussion that we started in the beginning of the year with a workshop on data quality and also uh, some sessions in uh, Wikimania. So the goal of this talk is basically to bring some thoughts that we have been collected uh, from the community and ourselves and uh, continue the discussion. So what we would like is to continue interacting a lot with you. Um, so what we think is very important is that we continuously ask all types of users in the community about what they really need, what problems they have uh, with data quality, not only editors but also the people who are coding or consuming the data and also researchers who are actually using all the edit history to analyze what is happening. Um, so we did um, a review of around 80 tools that are existing in Wikidata and we aligned them to the different uh, data quality dimensions and what we saw was that actually many of them were looking at monitoring completeness but actually uh, and also some of them are also enabling interlinking but um, there, there is a big need for uh, tools that are looking into diversity, which is one of the things uh, that we actually can have in Wikidata. And especially this design principle of Wikidata, where we can have plurality and different statements with different values uh, coming from different sources because it's a secondary source. We don't have really tools that actually tell us how many plural statements there are and how many we can improve on how. And we also don't know really uh, what are all the reasons for plurality that we can have. So from these uh, community meetings, what we uh, discussed was the challenges that still need attention are, for example, um, that 
having all this crowdsourcing community is very good because different people attack different parts of the uh, data or the graph and we also have different background knowledge but actually it's very difficult to align everything in something homogeneous because different, uh, different people are using different uh, properties in different ways and they are also expecting different things from entity descriptions. People also said that um, they also need more tools that give a better overview of the global status of things. So uh, what entities are missing but in terms of completeness, but also like what are people working on right now uh, most of the time. And they also mentioned many times a tighter uh, collaboration across not only languages, but the wiki projects and uh, the different Wikimedia platforms. And we published all the transcribed uh, comments from all these discussions in those links here in the etherpads and also in the wiki page of Wikimania. Some solutions that appeared actually uh, were going into the direction of sharing more the best practices that are being developed in different wiki projects, but also people want tools that help organize work in uh, teams or at least understanding who is working on that. And they were also mentioning that they want more showcases and more templates that help them create things in a better way. And from the contact that we have from uh, with open governmental uh, data organizations, and in particular I'm in contact with the Canton and the city of Zurich, they are very interested in working with Wikidata because they want their data to be accessible for everyone in the place where people go and consult or access data. So for them, something that would be really interesting is to have some kind of quality indicators, both in the wiki, which is already happening, but also in Sparkle results to know whether they can trust or not that data from the community. And then uh, they also want to know what parts of their own data sets are useful for Wikidata, and they would love to have a tool that can help them assess that automatically. They also need some kind of methodology or tool that helps them uh, decide whether they should import or link their data, because in some cases they also have their own linked open data sets, so they don't know whether to just ingest the data or to keep on creating links from the data set to Wikidata and the other way around. And they also want to know where their websites are referred in Wikidata. And when they run such a uh, query in the query service, they often get timeouts. So maybe we should really create more tools that help them uh, get these answers for the questions. And that is besides that, uh, we wiki researchers also uh, sometimes lack some information in the edit summaries. So I remember that when we were doing some work to understand uh, the different behavior uh, of editors with tools or, w or bots or uh, anonymous users and so on, we were really lacking, uh, for example, a standard way of uh, tracing that tools were being used. And there are some tools that are already doing that, like Pet PetScan and many others, but maybe we should in the community discuss more um, about how to uh, record this for fine-grained provenance. And further on, uh, we think that we need to think of uh, more concrete data quality dimensions that are related to linked data, but not all the types of uh, data. So we work on uh, some measures to assess actually the information gain enabled by the links. And what we mean by that is that when we link Wikidata to other data sets, we should also be thinking how much the entities are actually gaining in the classification, also in the description, but also in the vocabularies they use. So just to give a very uh, simple uh, example of what I mean with this is we can think of, in this case would be Wikidata or the external data set that, are, that is linking to Wikidata. We have the entity for a person that is called Natasha Noy. We have the affiliation and other things. And then we say, okay, we link to an external place and that entity also has that name. But we actually have the same value. So what it would be better is that we link to something that has a different name that is still valid because this person has two ways of writing the name and also other information that we don't have in Wikidata or that we don't have in the other data set. But also what is even better is that we are actually looking in the target data set that they also have new ways of classifying the information. So not only is this a, a person but in the other data set they also say it's a female or anything else that they classify with. 
And if in the other data set they are using many other vocabularies, that is also helping in the whole information retrieval thing. So um, with that, I also would like to say that we think that we can uh, showcase federated queries better, because when we look at the uh, query log provided by Malishev et al., uh, we see actually that from the organic queries, we have only very few federated queries. And actually, federation is one of the key uh, advantages of, of having linked data. So maybe the community or the people using Wikidata also need more examples on this. And if we look at the list of endpoints that are being used, this is not a complete list, and we have many more. Of course, this data was analyzed from queries until March 2018, but we should look into the list of federated endpoints that we have and see whether we are really using them or not. So two questions that I have for the audience that maybe we can use afterwards for the discussion are what data quality problems should be addressed in your opinion because of the needs that you have, but also where do you need more automation to help you with editing or patrolling? That's all, thank you very much. Okay, so what I'm going to talk is about uh, some tools that uh, we were developing uh, related with safe expressions. And so this is uh, what I want to talk, uh, Jose Emilio Labra, but this has, uh, all these tools have been done by different people, um, mainly related with the W3C sex communi safe expressions community group, sex community group. So uh, the first tool that I want to mention is RDF SAPE. This is a general tool because uh, uh, SAPE Expressions is not only for Wikidata. Uh, SAPE Expressions is a language to validate RDF in general. So this tool was developed mainly by me and it's a tool uh, to validate RDF in general. So if, if you want to learn about RDF or you want to validate RDF or Sparkle endpoints, not only in Wikidata, my advice is that you can use this tool also for 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 teaching. I, I mean, I am a teacher in the university, and I use it in my semantic web course to teach RDF. So if you want to learn RDF, I, I think it's a good tool. And for example, this is just a visualization of an RDF graph with that tool. Uh, but before coming here, uh, in the last month, <laughs> I started a fork of RDF SAPE specifically for Wikidata because I thought that and it's called Wikisape, and yesterday I presented it as a, as a present for Wikidata. So what I took is what I did is to remove all the the stuff that was not related with Wikidata and to put several things hard coded. For example, this, the Wikidata Sparkle endpoint. But now some, someone asked me if I could do it also for Wikibase, and it, it is very easy to do it for Wikibase also. So this tool, uh, Wikisave, uh, is quite new. Uh, I think it works most of the features, but there are some features that maybe if don't work, and if you try it and you want to improve it, please uh, tell me. So this is a uh, sign script captures, but I think I can't even try. So let's try. <laughs> so let's see if it works. First, I have to to go out of the yeah okay. yeah. So this is the the tool here. Um, things that you can do with the tool, for example, is that you can check uh, schemas, uh, entity schemas. You know that there is a new namespace which is e whatever. So here, if you start, for example, write uh, for example human as you are writing it autocomplete and allows you to, to check, for example, this is the, the safe expressions of a human, and this is the, the safe expressions here. And as you can see, this, is, this, has, this editor has syntax highlighting, and this is in, in uh, well, maybe it's very small, the screen. I can try to do it bigger. Maybe you see it better now. So, and this is the editor with syntax highlighting and also has, I mean, this editor uh, comes from the same source code as the Wikidata query service. So, for example, if you go, if you hover with the mouse here, it shows you the, the labels of the different uh, properties. So I think it's very helpful because uh, the, now the, the entity schemas that it has in the, that is in the Wikidata is just a plain text 
uh, idea. And I think this editor is much better because it has autocomplete and it also has, and if you, for example, want to add a, a constraint, you say WDT colon, you start writing author, and then you uh, click control space, and it suggests the different things. So this is similar to the Wikidata, Wikidata query service, but specifically for uh, for shape expressions, because my feeling is that uh, creating shape expressions uh, is not more difficult than writing Sparkle queries. So some, some people think that it's, uh, it's, so it's at the same level. More, even it's probably easier, I, I think, because uh, shape expressions was, when we designed it, shape expressions was, we were trying it to be easier to, to work. Okay, so, th so this is one of the first things that you have this editor for shape expressions. But then you also have uh, the possibility, for example, to visualize. You have, if you have a shape expressions, you use, for example, I think written, this written work is a nice shape expressions because it has some relationships between different things. And this is the UML visualization of uh, written work in a UML, and this is easy to, to see the different properties. Um, when do, you do this, I, I realize when I try with several people, they find some mistakes in their shape expressions because it's easy to detect which are the missing properties or whatever. Then there another possibility here is that you can also validate. I think it's, I have it here, the validation. I think I had it in some label. Maybe I closed it. Okay, but you can, for example, you can click here, validate entities. You, for example, uh, uh, Q42 with E42, which is the uh, author of uh, with human. I think we, we can do it with human. And then it's, and it, it's taking a little while to do it because this is doing the Sparkle queries and, and now it's, for example, this failing by the network, but so but you can try it. It's an, okay, so let's go continue with the presentation with other tools. So, I mean, if my advice is that if you want to try it and you, you want any feedback, let me know. So, to continue with the presentation. So, this is Wikisafe. Then, uh, well, I already said this, there's, uh, uh, the Shape Expressions Editor uh, is uh, an independent uh, project in GitHub. Um, you can use it in your own project. If you want to do a Shape Expressions uh, tool, uh, you can just embed it in any, play, in, in any other project. So this is uh, it's in GitHub and you can do, use it. Then the same author is, is one of my students. Uh, he also created uh, an editor for shape expressions, also inspired by the Wikidata query service, where you have this, uh, in, in a column, you have this uh, more visual editor of uh, Sparkle queries where you can put this kind of things. So this is uh, a screen capture where you can see that that's the, sec the shape expressions in text, but this is a, a form-based shape expressions, where I, I will probably take a bit longer, uh, where you can uh, put the different rows and the different uh, fields. Okay. Then there is a uh, sexer. Um, we have uh, it's done uh, by one PhD student at the University of Oviedo, and it's here, so he, you can present sexer. Hi all. I am Danny Fernandez. I am I, a PhD student in the University of Oviedo, working with Labra. And since we are running out of time, <laughs> let's make this quickly. So let's not go for any actual demo, but just print some screenshots. Okay, so uh, the usual way to work with uh, shape expression or any shape language is that you have a domain expert that defines a priori how the graph should look like, defines some structures, and then you use these structures to validate the, the actual data against it. Uh, this tool, which is uh, as well as la the ones that Labra has been presented, this is a general purpose tool for any RDF source, is uh, designed to do the other way around. You already have some data, you select uh, what nodes you want to get the shape about, and then you automatically uh, strat and fill the shape. So, even if this is a general purpose tool, what we did for this Wikidata Kong is this fancy button. <laughs> uh, 
that if you click it, essentially what happens is that, um, well, there are some so many um, configurations params, and it like configures it to work against the Wikidata endpoint, and it will end soon. Sorry. Uh, so uh, once you press this button, what you get is essentially this. After having selected what kind of nodes, with kind of instances of a class, whatever you uh, are looking for, you get the automatic schema. Uh, all the constraints are sorted by how many nodes uh, actually conform to it. You can filter the less common ones, etc. So there is a poster downstairs about this stuff, and well, I will be downstairs and upstairs and all over the place all day. So if you have any further interest in, in this tool, just pick me uh, during this journey. And now, give back the micro to Labra. Thank you. So let's <laughs> So let's continue with the, the other tools. Well, the other tool is the same designer. Uh, Andra, do you want to do the presentation of the same designer? No, maybe later or in the workshop. Uh, there is a works This afternoon, there is a workshop uh, specifically for safe expressions. So, and there, uh, the, the idea is that that workshop will be more hands-on. And if you want to do to practice uh, uh, some checks, you can do it there. And this, this tool is sex, uh, and there's Eric here, so you can present. So just super quick, the um, thing that I want to say is that you've probably already seen the the uh, Shex interface for that's tailored for Wikidata. That's uh, effectively uh, stripped down for, and, and tailored specifically for Wikidata because the generic one has some more features. But uh, it turns out I thought I'd mention it because one of those features is particularly useful for debugging uh, Wikidata schemas, which is if you um, go and you select the slurp mode. What it does is it says, while I'm validating, I want to pull all the, the triples down. And that means if I get a bunch of valid failures, I can go through and start looking at those failures and saying, OK, what are the triples that are in here? As I, sorry, I apologize. The triples are down there. This was just the log of what went by. Uh, and then you can just sit there and fiddle with it in real time, like you play with something and it changes. So it's a, a quicker version for uh, doing all that stuff. Um, this is a checks form. This is something uh, uh, Joachim had suggested uh, could be useful for populating uh, check, uh, uh, Wikidata documents based on a shape expression for that, that document. Uh, this, is, um, uh, this is not tailored for Wikidata, but this is just to say that you can have a schema and you can have some annotations to say specifically how I want that schema rendered, and then it just builds a form. And if you've got data, it can even populate the form. Pi checks because also there's a. I think this is the last one. Yes. So this is the last one is PySex. PySex is a, a, a Python implementation of safe expressions, and uh, you can play also with Jupyter notebooks if you want those kind of things. Okay. So that's all for sex. <laughs> So I'm going to talk uh, about a specific project uh, that I'm involved in called GeneWiki and where we uh, are uh, also dealing with quality issues. But before uh, going into the quality, maybe a quick introduction about what GeneWiki is. And we just uh, released a preprint of a paper that we recently have written that explains the details of, of the project. And I see people taking pictures, but basically what GeneWiki does, it's trying to get biomedical data, public data into Wikidata, and we follow up a, a specific pattern to get that data into Wikidata. So when, when we have a new reposit repository or a new data set that is eligible to be included into Wikidata, the first step is community engagement. This is not necessarily directly the Wikidata community, but a local research community. And we meet in person or online or, or, or in any platform and try to come up with a data model that bridges their data with the Wikidata model. So here I have a picture of a workshop that happened here last year, which was trying to look at a specific data set. And well, you see a lot of discussions, then aligning it with uh, schema.org and other ontologies that are out there. And then at the end of the first step, we have a whiteboard drawing of the schema that we want to implement in Wikidata, where you see uh, over there, which is just plain. We have it in the back there, so we can, we can make some schemas to, within this panel today, even. And so once we have that schema in place, the next thing is try to make that schema machine readable. 
uh, because you want to have actionable, mod actionable models to, m to bridge the data that you're bringing in from any biomedical database into Wikidata. And um, here we uh, applied, uh, we are applying shape expressions. And, and you, we, we use that because shape expressions allow you to test whether the data set is actually, uh, no, to first see of already existing data in Wikidata follows the same data model that was uh, achieved in the previous process. So then with the shape expression, we can check, okay, the data that are on this topic in Wikidata, does it need some cleaning up or do we need to adapt our model to the Wikidata model or vice versa? Once, there is, once that is in place, and we start writing bots, and the bots are regularly are, are seeding the information that is, in, uh, that is in the primary sources into Wikidata. And when the bots are ready, we, uh, we, we, we write these bots with a platform called, uh, with a um, Python library called the Wikidata Integrator that, was, that came out of this, uh, our project. And then once we have our bots, we um, use a platform called Jenkins for continuous integration. And with Jen Jenkins, we re uh, continuously update the primary sources with, Wiki, with Wikidata. And this is, the, this is a diagram for the paper I previously mentioned. This is our current landscape. So every orange box out there is a primary resource on drugs, proteins, uh, genes, diseases, chemical compounds with, with interaction. And this, these models, it's too, too, too small to read now. But this is the, these are the database, the, the sources that we manage in Wikidata and bridge with, um, with the primary sources. So here is, here is such a workflow. So one of, the, one of our partners is the disease ontology. The disease ontology is a CC0 ontology. And uh, the CC0 ontology has a curation cycle on its own. And they just continuously update the disease ontology to, to, the, the, uh, to reflect the disease space or the interpretation of diseases. And there is the Wikidata curation cycle, also on diseases where, where, where the, uh, the Wikidata community constantly monitors what's going on on Wikidata. And then we have two roles, we, we call them colloquially the uh, gatekeeper curator. And this was me and a colleague uh, five years ago, where we just sit on our computers and we monitor Wikipedia and Wikidata. And if, this, if, there is a, if there is an issue that was reported back to the primary community, the primary resources, they looked at the implementation and decided, okay, do we, do we trust the Wikidata input? Yes, then it's considered it goes into the cycle and the next iteration is part of the, uh, of the of the disease ontology and then uh, fed back into Wikidata. Same, same is, uh, we're doing the same for, the, um, for Wikipathways. So Wikipathways is a MediaWiki inspired pathway, on, uh, pathway repository. Same story, we, the path, there are different pathway resources on Wikidata already. Uh, there might be conflicts between those pathway resources and these conflicts are reported back by the gatekeeper curators to that community and we maintain the individual uh, curation cycles. But if, if you remember the previous cycle, here I mentioned only two, um, two cycles, um, uh, two, two resources. If we have to do that for every single resource that we have and we have to manage the, what's going on because when I say curation, I really mean going to the Wikipedia talk pages, going into the, the, the Wikidata talk pages and trying to do that. That doesn't scale for the two, uh, two gatekeeper curators we had. So when I was in a conference in 2016 where uh, um, Eric gave a presentation on shape expressions, I jumped on the bandwagon and said, okay, shape expressions can help us detect what is differences in Wikidata. Uh, and so that g allows the gatekeepers to have some more efficient reporting to report. So um, this year I was delighted by the schema entity because now we can store those uh, entity schemas on on Wikidata, on Wikidata itself, whereas before it was on GitHub. And this aligns with the Wikidata interface, so you have things like document uh, discussions, but you also have revisions. So you can, you, can, you can leverage the talk pages and the revisions in Wikidata to, uh, to use that uh, to, um, to discuss about what is in Wikidata and what are in the primary resources. So this is, Eric just presented it, this is, this is already quite, Benefit. So here we, we, we made up a, a shape expression for the, for the human gene and then we uh, run it through sh uh, simple checks and uh, as you can see we just get 
uh, already one, there is one issue that needs to be monitored at, which is an item that doesn't fit that schema. And then you can sort of cre already create schema entities uh, uh, and uh, curation reports based on, s uh, and send that to the different curation reports. But um, the Shex.js is uh, built in a phase, and if, you if, if I can show back, here I only do 10, but we have tens to thousands, and so that, that again doesn't scale. So the Wikidata integrator now supports um, Shex support as well, uh, and then we can use just loop item loops where um, we say uh, yes, no, yes, no, true, false, true, false, so again, increasing a bit of the efficiency of dealing with the, sh uh, with the reports. But now recently, that builds on uh, 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 the Wikidata query service, and well, we recently have been throttling, so again, that doesn't scale. So it's still an ongoing process, how to, how to deal with models on Wikidata. And so again, Shex is not only intimidating, but also the scale is just too big uh, to deal with. So and I started working, this is my first proof of concept, or exercise where I used a tool called YET, and I started to write, drive the uh, draw those shape expressions, uh, because, uh, and then uh, uh, regenerate this schema into this schema into uh, a JSON format of the shape expression. So that would open up uh, already to the audience that are intimidated by the shape expressions uh, languages, but. Actually, there is a problem with those uh, visual descriptions because this is also a schema that is actually drawn in YED uh, and, and by someone. And here is another one which uses, uh, an, uh, which is it's beautiful. I would love to have this on my wall, but uh, it is still not interoperable. So I want to end my talk with, and I've, it's the first time the, I've been stealing this slide, using this slide, it's an honor to have him in the audience. And, uh, and I really like this, is that people think RDF is a pain because it's complicated, the truth is even worse, it's so simple, uh, and, uh, because you have to work with real data problems and that are horribly complicated. While you can't avoid RDF, it's hard. It is harder to avoid complicated data and complicated computer problems. This is about RDF, but I think this so applies to modeling as well. So my, my, my point of discussion is, should we really, how do we get uh, modeling going? Should we discuss shacks or visual, visual models, or yeah, how, how do we continue? Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. Um, would you come to the front so that we can open uh, the questions from the audience? Are there questions? Yes. And I think. For the camera, we need to. <laughs> yeah. So a question for uh, for Christina, I think. Hi. Uh, so you mentioned uh, you mentioned exactly the term uh, information gain mm -hmm. from linking with other systems. I mean, there is an information theoretic measure used in statistical probability called information gain. Do you have the same? Uh, I mean, did did you mean exactly that measure? The information gain from the probability theory from information theory or what's just used this conceptual thing to measure information gain in some way? No, no, we, uh, so we actually define and implemented measures uh, that are usually, uh, are using the Shannon entropy. So um, it's meant as that. I, I didn't want to go into details of the concrete No, no, formulas, no, of course, of course, that's why I asked but question. Yeah. yeah, thank you. make more of a comment than a question. Go for it. So there's been a lot of focus at the item level about quality and completeness. One of the things that concerns me is that we're not applying the same to hierarchies. And I think we have, a, we have an issue is that our hierarchy often isn't good. We're seeing this is going to be a real problem with common searching and other things. One of the abilities that we can do is to import the, the way that external <coughs> thesauruses structure their hierarchies using the P4900 broader concept qualifier. But what I think would be really helpful would be much better tools for, for doing that so that you can import an external thesauruses hierarchy, map that onto our, our Wikidata items. Once it's in place with those P4900 qualifiers, 
you can actually do some quite good querying through Sparkle um, to see where our hierarchy diverges from that external hierarchy. For instance, Paula Mormer, user PKM, you may know, does a lot of work on fashion. So we, we, we use that to, to pull in the Europeana fashion thesaurus's hierarchy and the Getty AAT fashion thesaurus hierarchy and then see where the gaps were in our higher level items, which is a real problem for us because often these are things that only exist as disambiguation pages on Wikipedia. So we have a lot of higher level items in our hierarchies missing and this is something that we must address in terms of quality and completeness. But what would really help would be better tools than the jungle of Perl scripts that I wrote. It took, if somebody could put that into a pause um, notebook in, in Python to be able to take an external thesaurus, take its, its hierarchy, which may well be available as linked data or may not, um, to then put those into quick statements to put in P4900 values. And then later when our representation gets more complete to update those P4900s because our as our representation gets date get, becomes more dense, those, the, the values of those qualifiers need to change to, to, to represent that we've got more of their hierarchy in our system. If somebody could do that, I think that would be very helpful and we do need to, con to, to also look at other approaches to improve quality and completeness at the hierarchy level, not just at the item level. Yes, and um, we actually do that, and I can recommend looking at the shape expression that Finn made with uh, the lexical data where he creates shape expressions and then built on other shape expressions. So you have this concept of linked shape expressions in Wikidata. And the specifically the use case, if I understand correctly, is exactly what we're doing in GeneWiki. So you have, you have the disease ontology which is put into Wikidata, and then disease data comes in, and we apply the shape expressions to see if, the, if that fits with this thesaurus. And there are other thesauruses or the other ontologies of controlled vocabulary that still need to go into Wikidata and that's exactly why shape expression is so interesting because you can have a shape expression for the disease ontology, you can have a shape expression for MASH. You can say, okay, now I want to check the quality because you also have in Wikidata the context of when you have a uh, controlled vocabulary, you say the quality is, uh, is according to this, but you might have a disagreeing community. So, so the tooling is indeed in place, but now it's indeed to, to create those models and apply them on the different use cases. I come that. The shape expression is very useful once you have the external ontology mapped into Wikidata. But my problem is that it's getting to that stage. It's working out how much of the external ontology isn't yet in Wikidata and where the gaps are, and that's where I think um, that, that having much more robust tools to see where the, what's missing from external ontologies would be, be very helpful. And the biggest problem, there is not so much tooling, but more licensing. So getting the ontologies into Wikidata is actually a piece of cake, but most of the ontologies have, uh, how can I say that politely, uh, restrictive licensing, so they're not compatible with Wikidata. Oh, then we need to talk. Then, then we need to talk. Um, uh, just uh, the comment I want to make is, uh, want to make is actually the answer to James. Uh, so, the thing is that hierarchies make graphs, and uh, when you want to, like, I want to basically talk about this. Um, a common problem in hierarchies is the circular hierarchies. So they come back to each other, and when there is a problem, which you should not have that in hierarchies. Um, this, uh, funnily enough, happens in uh, categories in Wikipedia a lot. Uh, we have lots of circles in categories. Uh, but the good news is that this is our, this is, in, technically it's a PMP uh, complete problem, so you cannot find this in easily if you build a graph of it. Uh, but there are lots of ways that has been developed to find like problems in this uh, hierarchy graphs. Like there is a, uh, paper called uh, Finding uh, Circles, Breaking Circles uh, in uh, Noisy Hierarchies. Uh, and you can, it's being used to uh, help categorization of English Wikipedia. You can just take this and apply this in uh, hierarchies uh, on uh, Wikidata and then you can find things that are problematic and just remove these uh, ones that are causing issues uh, and find the issues actually. So uh, this is this idea I was just saying. 
That's all very well, but I think you're underestimating the number of bad subclass relations that we have. I mean, it's like having, it's like having a city in completely the wrong country. And the, there are tools for geography to identify that. And we need to have much be better tools in hierarchies to identify where the, uh, the equivalent of the item for the country is missing entirely or where it's actually been, been subclassed to something that isn't kind of complete meaning, meaning something completely different. Yeah, I, I think um, you're getting to something that um, me and my team keeps hearing um, from people who reuse our data um, quite a bit as well, right? Um, individual data points might be great, but if you have to look at the ontology and so on, then it gets very... Mm, and I think um, one of the big problems why this is happening is that um, a lot of editing on Wikidata happens on the basis of an individual item, right? You make an edit on that item um, without realizing that this might have very global con uh, consequences on the rest of the graph, for example. And if people have ideas around how to make this more visible, the consequences of an individual local edit, um, I think that would be uh, worth exploring um, to, to show people better what the consequence of their edit that they might do in very good faith, um, what that is. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's start with, uh, yeah, you, then you, then you. Then. Well, uh, after this discussion, just to express my agreement with what uh, uh, James was, uh, uh, was saying. So essentially, I think the most dangerous thing is the, uh, um, the hierarchy, I mean, not the hierarchy, but generally the semantics of the subclass relations in in, uh, in Wikidata, right? So uh, I've been studying languages recently, just for the purposes of this conference, and for example, you find a p plenty of cases where a language is a part of and a subclass of the same thing, okay? So, uh, you know, you can say we have a flexible uh, ontology. Wikidata gives you freedom to express that. You know, sometimes, because, for example, that ontology of languages is also politically complicated, right? It is even good to be in a position to express a level of uncertainty, right? But imagine anyone who wants to do machine reading from that, right? So that's really problematic. And then again, I don't think that ontology was ever uh, imported from somewhere. That's something which is originally ours. It's harvested from Wikipedia in the very beginning, I would say, right? So I wonder, uh, this shape expressions thing is great. And also uh, validating and uh, fixing, if you like, the Wikidata ontology with, uh, by external resources. Beautiful idea. Uh, in the end, will we end by reflecting the uh, external ontologies in Wikidata? And also, what do we do with the core part of our ontology, which is never harvested from external resources? How do we go and fix that? And uh, I really think that, that's, that that will be a problem on its own. We will have to focus on that uh, uh, independently of the idea of validating ontology with something external. Okay, and the um, constraints and shapes are very impressive, what you, we can do with it, um, but the, the main point is, has not been really made clear. It's because uh, now we can make it more explicit what we, we expect from the data. Before, each one has to write its own tools and, and scripts, and so we, it's more visible and we, and we can discuss about it. But it's because it's not about what's wrong or right, it's about uh, uh, an expectation. And we will have different expectation and discussion about what, how we want to model things in Wikidata. And <coughs> as these, uh, the, the current state is just one step in the direction because it now you need very much technical expertise to get into this. And we need better ways to visualize uh, this constraints, to, to transform it maybe in natural language so people can better understand. Um, but it's less about what's wrong or right. So on uh, for quality issues, I just want to echo, like, I've definitely found a lot of the issues I've encountered have been um, differences in opinion between instance of versus subclass. And I get, or I would say errors in, in those situations and like trying to find those has been, you know, a very time consuming process. And what I've found is like, oh, if I find very high impression items that are something and then use all the subclass instances to find all the derive statements of this. This is a very useful way of um, 
looking for these errors, but I was curious if shape expressions, um, like if there is a, if this can be used as a tool to help um, resolve those issues. If it has a structural footprint that you can, that's sort of falsifiable, you can look at that and say, well, that's wrong, then yeah, you can, you can do that. But if it's just uh, sort of trying to map it to real world objects, then you're just going to need lots and lots of brains. Hi, uh, Pablo Mendes from Apple Syria Knowledge. Uh, we're here to find out how to help the project and the community. But Christina made the mistake of asking what we want. Uh, <laughs> so, so I think one thing I'd like to see um, is a lot around verifiability, uh, which is one of the core tenets of the, the project in the community, and trustworthiness. Uh, not every statement is the same. Some of them are heavily disputed. Some of them are easy to guess, like somebody's date of birth can be verified. It, as you saw today in the keynote, gender issues are a lot more complicated. Um, can, can you discuss a little bit what you know in this area of, uh, of data quality around trustworthiness and verifiability? <laughs> if there isn't a lot, I'd love to see a lot more. <laughs> yeah. Um, apparently, we don't have a lot to say on that. <laughs> um, I think we can do a lot, but I had a discussion with you yesterday. My favorite example I learned yesterday that's already deprecated is if you, uh, if you go to the Q2, which is Earth, there is a statement that claims that, that the Earth is flat. And I, I, was, I love that example because there is a community out there that claims that and they have verifiable resources. So I think it's a genuine case. It shouldn't be deprecated. It should be in Wikidata. And I think uh, shape expression can be really... Exp uh, um, instrumental there because what you can say okay I, I really I'm really interested in this use case so this is a use case where you disagree but there can also be a use case where you say okay I'm interested so there's there is this example where you say I have glucose and glucose when you're a, when you're a biologist you, you, you don't care for the uh, chemical constraints of the glucose molecule you just all the everything glucose is the same but if you're a chemist you cringe when you hear that you have 200 something um, so then you can have multiple shape expressions. Say, okay, now I'm coming in with a metachemist view. I'm, I'm applying that. And then you say, I'm having a biological um, use case. I'm applying that shape expression. And then when you want to collaborate, yes, well, you should talk to Eric about Shex maps. And, uh, and so, but it's, this is just, this venue, this, this uh, journey is just starting. But uh, personally, I believe that it's quite instrumental in that area. Okay, come on, yeah. I, uh, I had several ideas from uh, some points in the discussion, so I will try not to uh, lose. Uh, I had three ideas, so okay. uh, based on what James said so a while ago, we have a very, very big problem on Wikidata since the beginning for, for the upper ontology. Uh, we we talked about that two years ago at Wikidatacon, and we talk about that at Wikimania. At the, well, we always we are a Wikidata meeting, we are talking about that, uh, because it's a very big problem at the very, very high level, what entity is, with what uh, work is, what uh, genre is, art, or very l the biggest concept. And um, that's actually a very weak point on our global ontology because uh, people try to clean up regularly and broke everything down the line uh, because and yes I think some of you may remember the guy who in good faith broke absolutely all cities in the world who were not geographical items anymore uh, so violation constraint everywhere uh, and it was in good faith because it was really correcting a mistake in an item, uh, but everything worked done. And uh, I'm not sure how we can solve that uh, because there is actually no uh, external institution we could just copy because everyone is working on 
Uh, well, if I am a, a performing art database, I will just go at the performing art level. I won't go to the uh, philosophical concept of what an entity is. And uh, that's actually, I, I don't know any database which is working at this level, but that's the weakest point of Wikidata. Uh, and probably when we are talking about data quality, that's actually a big part of it. So, and uh, we, I think it's, it's the same we have st uh, stated in, uh, sorry, I'm changing subject, uh, uh, but we have stated in different uh, sessions about qualities, uh, which is actually some of us are doing good modeling job, are doing checks, are doing things like that, and people don't see it on Wikidata. Uh, they don't see the checks, uh, they don't see the wiki project on the discussion page, and sometimes they don't even see the talk pages of properties, which are explicitly stating, hey, this property is used for that. Like last week, uh, we had, I added a constraint to a property. The constraint was explicitly written in the discussion of the creation of the property. I just created the uh, technical part of adding the constraint. And someone wrote to me, you broke down all my edits. And he was using uh, the property wrongly for the last two years. And the property was actually very clear. But there were no warning and everything. And so it's the same at the Pink Pony. We said that Wikimania ought to make freaky project more visible or to make checks more visible. But, and that's what Christina said. We have a, a visibility problem of what the existing solution are. And uh, at this session, we are all talking about how to create more checks, how to cr facilitate the jobs of the people who are doing the cleanup. But uh, we are cleaning up since the first day of Wikidata. Yep. And uh, globally, we are losing. Uh, and we are losing because, well, if I know names are complicated, but I am the only one doing the cleaning up job, the guy who had a uh, Latin script name to all Chinese researcher, I will take months to clean that, and I can't do it alone. And he did one massive batch. So we really need, we have a visibility problem more than a tool problem, I think, because we have many tools. Right. So unfortunately, I've got shown the sign. <laughs> so we need to wrap this up. Thank you so much for your comments. I hope you will continue discussing uh, during the rest of the day. And thanks for your input. <laughs>